Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, my name is Gian Pazio with KBKG. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, some general concepts around cost segregation, specifically for residential property. Uh, but the main thing that I wanted to, we're going to talk about today is, uh, is a new uh, software that allows tax preparers or building owners to generate a cost segregation report uh, for smaller residential properties. For those that are not familiar with KBKG, we've been around since 1999. Uh, we provide turnkey tax solutions to CPAs and businesses of all sizes. And we've performed thousands of different types of tax projects. Um, we specialize in cost segregation, the R&D tax credit, uh, some energy tax incentives, um, such as the residential home builders tax credit, under Section 45L, uh, the 179 cap, capital D energy tax incentives for architects and, and building designers of government property, um, and a number of other uh, specialty tax services. Our team is a mix of attorneys, energy consultants, and engineers from various disciplines. Um, and it's really this combination of talent that allows us to be the very best at what we do. Some background about myself, I'm a civil engineer, a principal at KBKG, and also a certified cost segregation specialist through the American Society of Cost Segregation Professionals. Um, I've been heavily involved, uh, been on their board of directors since 2007, and also a past president. Um, I've served as an expert witness for cost segregation matters before the IRS. Um, and before joining KBKG, I was with two of the big four uh, uh, national CPA firms uh, doing cost segregation. I have over 17 years of cost segregation experience. So uh, before I get in, you know, one of the things that a lot of people ask, they're interested in the software we're going to talk about called the Residential Cost Segregator. And, uh, you know, there's been a little bit of confusion. You can sign up and register for a free account that allows you to go in there and play with the software without paying anything. And, and to do that, you would go to www.kbkgsolutions.com. So I just wanted to throw that out there uh, before we got going. So. Most of us know what cost segregation is. Um, it's been around for quite a while, uh, you know, over 30 years in one uh, way, shape, or form. Um, as tax laws have changed, depreciation lives and so on have changed as well, but the concept of cost segregation uh, has carried on over the years. Today, in its current form, the primary goal of a cost segregation study is to identify all of the property related costs when we're talking about real estate. We're looking at all the property related costs that can be depreciated over a shorter tax life than the long life of a building. So when we're talking about residential property, that's normally depreciated over 27 and a half years. But there's a lot of components inside the property that could be depreciated over a five or seven a year tax life and, and things on the outside of the building uh, would get a 15 year tax life, things like the parking lots and so on. And so the idea is if we can accelerate and shorten the tax lives of these items, we're accelerating tax deductions, we're taking them earlier, which means we can increase our cash flow. And by doing that, we create a time value of money benefit by having your cash now and not waiting till later. Over the last couple of years, there's been a big tax law change under the tangible property regulations, and that has enhanced the benefit of a cost segregation study. So now, the secondary goal of a cost seg study is not just to identify the short life items, but to establish the depreciable tax value for every major building component that is likely to be replaced in the future. So 
Specifically, I want to focus on the long life items, the 27-year life items. So things like the roof, the windows, the doors, the bathroom fixtures, the HVAC system. Those have a 27 and a half year life, but we still want to know what they're worth because they're likely to be replaced in the future. And when they are, tax preparers need this information to claim a retirement loss or partial disposition deduction on the remaining depreciation that's left on that component. So it's very important now uh, with the new tangible property regulations to do that. I know most are familiar with cost segregation, um, but I want to emphasize that it is one of the most common tax planning tools for any tax preparer that specializes in real estate. Um, when somebody buys a building, great, you can recommend this to your client and they can um, set up their depreciation schedules correctly in the year that they acquire the building. However, one of the cool things about cost segregation is that you can do it any time after a building is purchased. So maybe you picked up a new tax client, or maybe you've had a tax client forever, they purchase buildings, you don't have to do the cost seg study in the year they purchase the buildings if you don't want to, or if you, they don't need the deductions. Or maybe you um, are predicting a higher tax rate in, in you know in a future year or a taxable event in a future year. These are the types of considerations a tax preparer can take into account in in recommending when to apply the cost segregation study. And the and the IRS has made it easy to implement a cost seg study at any time. So if you were to wait um, you do not have to amend any returns. What you do have to do if you um, do a cost segregation study on a previously acquired building, you file what's called the Form 3115. It's known as the uh, Automatic Change of Accounting Method Form. So it actually allows you to plan when to use those deductions. So, the typical rule of thumb is that it generally makes sense to do a cost segregation study anytime you have a building with a relatively large tax basis. So, um, you know, I think if you go out there and Google, you'll see that most, most of the time it's going to make sense to at least consider a cost seg study if the depreciable tax basis in the building is at least $750,000 or more. Okay, um, and, and the reason why it doesn't make sense to look at anything under that is because of the cost to hire a third-party cost segregation engineering firm. Okay, the, the typical cost is between five and ten thousand dollars, and it just doesn't pencil out usually if the tax basis is lower than seven hundred and fifty thousand. Um, but what we're going to show about uh, show you today is using uh, our newly developed software that it can make a lot of sense uh, for properties um, with as little as $150,000 of tax basis. So let's jump into it. Our residential cost segregator software allows you to prepare a report on smaller residential properties without the need to hire a third-party cost segregation engineer. So how do we do that? Well, like I said, uh, we're a fairly established cost segregation firm, and the software utilizes a lot of the same methods that we use when we do a cost seg study. So we're going to rely, the software relies on information that's provided by the building owner. It's going to look at empirical construction cost data and proprietary algorithms that have been written by our KBKG cost segregation team. Um, and what you're going to see, and I'm going to demonstrate this, is it's going to provide a detailed cost breakdown for the property categorized by tax life that you're going to use for income tax depreciation purposes.
So uh, most of the reports that this software generates is going to result in increased deductions of $20,000 or more over the first five years. Um, it is designed for tax preparers, um, and, it, and, and as you'll see, it's quite painless. Um, when the client, or what you're going to do is you're going to send in an email questionnaire to your client, a, a link, and the client input screen is going to be white labeled, so um, you know it's not. You can make it a service that you provide the clients on your own. Uh, the software costs $399 per report, um, and we're seeing tax preparers that use our software charging their clients um, as much as $2,000 or more uh, for the cost segregation service that they're delivering. KBKG will stand behind these reports. That's how confident we are in how this methodology works. Okay, so if you use this for your client, and it comes under IRS examination, uh, you give us a call and we will walk you through, walk the client through, discuss with the IRS if they have any questions about how we derived our numbers. And that's all absolutely free. That's how confident we are with this methodology. Uh, really quick to emphasize the types of benefits your client might receive. Uh, a rental duplex with a tax basis, depreciable tax basis of $200,000 that was purchased in 2011 would receive additional deductions in the first year of $18,000. And then, of course, as the basis gets larger, the benefits get larger. So a six-unit apartment building with a $500,000 tax basis purchased uh, in the current year, 2016, would receive additional deductions of $45,000 in the first five years. These benefits that I'm showing on this slide are only from the reclassification to short life property. So these benefits do not account for the additional benefits that you would realize from future partial disposition deductions. So there are some limitations to the software. It only works for residential properties up to six units with a depreciable tax basis of $500,000 or less. And that means the purchase price less land. So if you bought a uh, residential rental home for $600,000 and their land was worth one fifty. dollars that would be eligible um, um, to use with our software. Uh, so this works for rental homes, condos, and townhomes as well. I'm going to show you how uh, this works in three very easy steps. It should take tax preparers no longer than 10 minutes of their own time and uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes for your clients to answer the questions. So let's just jump into the demo. I'm going to switch my screen here to my internet browser. And uh, you'll see our cost segregation landing page for, our, uh, for this product. Once you register for a free account at kbkgsolutions.com, uh, this is what the website looks like. Like I said, you would create a free account. Uh, and once you are logged in, you'll be brought to our dashboard. Okay, this website or this, yeah, this website has a, a few different calculators and tools uh, that are available. Um, what you'll want to click on is the residential cost segregator tool. And once it's loaded, uh, you'll see your dashboard for the, for the residential cost segregator. And really, step one is you want, before you sell this idea to your client, you'll want to provide them an estimate of what their tax benefits could be before they purchase a report. So um, 
again, everything that I'm showing you uh, for the next you know, several minutes is something you can do for free on our site. You do, don't have to purchase anything. So I'm going to hit this estimate tax savings. Um, let's say that you have a client and you're looking at their depreciation schedule and the tax basis on a duplex residential property is $275,000 and let's say it was purchased in 2013. Um, with that information you can just hit this preview tax savings button and you'll instantly see um, what their expected tax benefits would be. So as you can see, um, it, they could expect additional first year deductions between about $18,000 and $27,000. So this is something that you can um, download into a PDF form and send it to your client. Again, there's no KVKG branding on this, so you can send this report um, directly to your client and get them to provide the thumbs up or the green light to move forward uh, with a cost segregation report. So again, you could you can sell this to your client. Of uh, you know you're going to pay for for $399 a report, but you could charge as much as you know over $2,000 depending on uh, how much value you're bringing. So after I've done that. I'm going to go back into the residential cost segregator. Um, once the client has uh, given us permission, you would go ahead and click the button that says New Report. Okay, and when you do that, a new report window will pop up. So, I'm going to walk you through as a CPA. Let's say you know the address of the building, and I already started this form. Um, we said that this is going to be a $275,000 uh, rental property uh, purchased oops, uh, in 2013. Now, at this point, you don't um, you don't have to answer anything else. In fact, you don't have to answer any of this information. What you could do is immediately send your client an invitation link via email. So you type in the client's um, email address and they will receive an email invitation link with instructions on how to proceed. Now I'm going to switch my screen, my browser, to, to the view that um, your client would see. So this is a similar view, but it doesn't have any KBK chief branding on it. Um, and actually, I have to hit the save and continue button. And I'm going to refresh my screen, and you'll see that the $275,000 tax basis uh, will show up on the client's view as it refreshes, and there it is. So this is uh, the, what they would see when they click the link that they receive on email. They see any information that you had started to input. Um, and now they proceed to answer the question. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say it's a residential duplex. has two stories with a square footage of 2,500 square feet. Let's say it's sitting on a 5,000 square foot um, lot, and we're going to say that it's masonry um, with a finished basement. And here you can the the building owner would select uh, the quality of construction and the physical condition, whether it needs updating or it's in good condition. We'll use average uh, and then we'll click the save and continue button. Now we move to the interior uh, question. So uh, we put in the total number of bedrooms. If this is a, uh, there's two units with three bedrooms each, there would be six total bedrooms. 
and uh, we'll say there's four total bathrooms. We'll say there's fire sprinklers uh, in the structure. And then the building owner selects the type of flooring in each room type. So if the kitchen has tile, we'll say the bathrooms have vinyl. Um, maybe the living room has wood flooring, and we'll say that the bedrooms have carpeting. Maybe the hallways have wood. Then you select whether it has heating and cooling or cooling only, whichever selection they, they pick. We'll say it's heating and cooling. And then the type of HVAC system, whether it's in-wall units or a central ducted system and so on. Um, here we select the number of ceiling fans. We'll say there's four in each unit for a total of eight. And then there are horizontal window blinds. Finally, on this tab, you select the appliances that were acquired with the property. Click the Save and Continue button, and now we move to the exterior section. Um, this is where we select whether there's a parking garage and whether it's attached or detached. So let's say there's an attached garage with two parking spaces and then an exterior driveway with four parking spaces. Um, I'll say there's landscaping on site as well as a patio. And then the last piece of information the client or the building owner um, can input is whether there's some kind of fence or wall around the site. Um, so in, in, for this example, let's say that there's a hundred lineal feet of wood fence around the site. Now we click save and continue. And uh, the building owner has one last chance to review all of the information before it's submitted. Um, once they do that, they can click Confirm and Submit for Review. And now the tax preparer will receive an email um, telling them that the information has been completed. So now the next time, uh, once you get that email, there will be a link, the tax preparer, and the next time you log in to the residential cost segregator, you will be able to see the property that we started. So we're going to go ahead, it says the status is ready for review, and we're going to go ahead and view that information or resume this. And as you can see, it's now populated with all of the information that your client had input. I'm going to show you this tab here um, that your the, the building owner does not see. It's something that only the tax preparer would see. Uh, and it allows you to input their combined federal and state tax rate. It allows you to input a return on an investment factor and also select the tax return year um, that the cost seg study would be applied. The last tab is simply a tab that compiles all the inputs for reviewing one last time. My only suggestion is that you confirm that the basis matches the depreciation schedule and that the place and service date is correct. Once you, uh, you're comfortable with all the information, you go ahead and you click the Calculate button and agree to our disclaimers. And at this point, if you have not purchased any uh, report credits, um, it will ask you or take you to our shopping cart and ask you to pay for uh, the report before you run the calculations. As you can see, in my case, I have 188 uh, report credits. I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the calculations. And so, 
what you'll see here is a summary. Okay, this summary is simply a an estimate of what the benefit um, has done. It's an it's an actual um, showing of how much uh, the benefits were. So, our study here resulted in an additional twenty one thousand dollars of additional tax deductions in the first year. Okay, um, this is something that you can forward to your client after you finish the study. Um, so that they can see exactly how much they benefited. But what you're going to be most interested in is the cost segregation results schedule. Okay, and that's what you're seeing here. This is the building breakdown based on the inputs of the client. You can see that it reconciles to the $275,000. Um, and when you look at the detail, you're going to see that it's customized. It's based on the inputs that the building owner um, put into the system. Uh, for example, you'll see a number here for fire sprinklers. Um, if the user did not check the box that the fire that there were fire sprinklers in this home, you would not see a value for fire sprinklers. Um, if the user did not input that there was carpeting in the master bedroom and other bedrooms, you would not see a carpeting number in this report. Same with the, blind, same with the blinds and so on. So depending on their inputs, it's changing not only what categories you're seeing in here in components, but also the values of these components. Uh, again, site fencing uh, was an input that, that the building owner uh, landscaping was another input, and a deck uh, was another checkbox. So as you can see, um, it's providing you that building breakdown. So not only do you get the benefits of the five and the 15-year tax categories, but also a component value for all of the major categories that could be replaced in a future year. Um, you'll also see all of the inputs, um, so all that information can be preserved uh, if you ever need to rely, uh, uh, go back to, to the inputs uh, into the software. At this point, you can save this as a PDF, forward it to your client. Um, you can also export it into Microsoft Excel. Um, you'll see that when we export it into Microsoft Excel that it's in a format that you can immediately import into most tax depreciation softwares. And that's how you would set up the depreciation schedule. Uh, for current year uh, property acquisitions, uh, you would typically be done with your work. You report the allocations or the, uh, the detail on the tax return and the client enjoys the benefits. For properties that were acquired in prior tax years, you, there is an additional step and that's to file a Form 3115. And so when you file the Form 3115, you're going to have to calculate how much depreciation was missed. Uh, in order to do that, or, or that's, that, that missed depreciation calculation is, is also known as the code section 481A adjustment. And we have a calculator that do that for you. So you can immediately send these results to our 481A calculator. As you can see, um, the results from our cost segregation report have been exported uh, right into our 481 calculator. It reconciles to the $275,000. And so um, we're going to go ahead and put in sample. Let's say that the tax year end is 12-31-2016. So, what it's doing here, it's asking what the original asset on the depreciation schedule um, 
what the tax basis was, what the place and service date was, and what the federal accumulated depreciation is. So you would look at the depreciation schedule. I'm going to go ahead and make up a number here. Say that there was $15,000 of accumulated depreciation. And now it's, we get all this information from our cost segregator software. Um, these are fully customizable. So if your client, for example, um, you needed to apply maybe the mid-quarter convention on the personal property, uh, you could go ahead and do that. Or if they purchased this, this property brand new, you can even apply bonus depreciation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the calculate button. And as you can see, it just calculated um, not only the total uh, 481 adjustment, but it's also doing it, it's, it's doing the accumulated depreciation or the adjusted depreciation by asset. The cool thing is, is it's showing the prior year's depreciation by asset as well and what it should have been. So I know a lot of times tax preparers ask us for some kind of schedule that shows them the prior year accumulated depreciation on each individual component after a cost seg study. This schedule provides that. And it can be exported into Microsoft Excel and also imported into your tax depreciation software. your 481A adjustment by building component, showing you exactly how the calculation is done. So as you can see, it was, you know, we're talking about clicks of a button here. Um, for, on the tax preparer side, this is a fairly painless process. Really, uh, the work that you guys have to do is identify which clients can benefit from this and then explaining to them how it's going to benefit them, um, and then getting it reported on the tax returns appropriately. And we're, the next software tool that I want to demonstrate, it's called our Partial Disposition Calculator. This allows you to determine the value of any component removed from a building without doing any cost segregation study. This Partial disposition calculator works for any type of building of any size. So it could be a $100 million uh, commercial building. The calculator takes five minutes or less to use, and it is fully supportable and uses an IRS-approved calculation method. Okay, this can generate very large deductions for your client. Um, so let's, let me switch my screen to our partial disposition calculator. Again, um, to get here, you go to KBKG Solutions, and uh, under the Calculators tab, you select Partial Disposition Calculator. So let's give an example here. Let's say you have a client that purchased or replaced all of their windows in their building, um, and they did that in 2016, say July 1st. Um, let's say they bought their building originally for $3.5 million, uh, and they acquired that building in 2009. We have some optional fields here, folks. Um, you could put, if you know the original construction date of the building, you can enter that. Um, if you have the accumulated depreciation of the building, let's say I'm going to make up a number here. Let's say that the accumulated depreciation on the original building 
is 225. Now you go ahead and you select the type of component. So you start typing in windows, you'll see different options. Uh, let's say that these are aluminum windows. And once you make that selection, um, you'll see several fields populated. It says the normal life of the replaced component is 20 years. It knows, based on our database, that aluminum windows typically last 20 years. See, one of the issues here when we're trying to calculate the value of, uh, of the old windows that were removed is, well, let me take a step back. The goal of this partial disposition calculator is to calculate the value of the old windows that were removed from the original building that was acquired for $3.5 million. We know that the new window cost $200,000. We know that that was they were purchased in 2016 and the old windows were effectively purchased in 2009. What we're going to do is we're going to use the producer price index at the time the, the windows were replaced and we're going to discount the value of the new windows all the way back to the placed and service date of the building. Okay, when we do that, it's going to come up with a value for the windows back in 19, or excuse me, in 2009 when the building is purchased. That value is $179,000. It's discounting $200,000 using the producer price index back to 2009 and it's coming up with $179,000. But we know, uh, but, but that represents the value of brand new windows in 2009. We know when we bought this building that those windows were not brand new. In fact, when we piece together the information, we know that, there was, that the windows lasted seven more years after the building was acquired. They bought it in 2009, they replaced them in 2016. They lasted seven more years. We know that the normal life of those windows is 20 years. So we know that effectively, those windows were effectively 13 years old. They normally last 20 years. They lasted seven years from the time they were acquired. Based on this information, we can calculate what we call a condition factor. We can calculate what the condition of 13-year-old windows is, and we're calculating it to be 48%. We're applying that 48% to the $179,000 of, of what new windows would cost back in 2009 to get what we call a producer price index adjusted cost of the component that was removed and it's adjusted for condition. This is the value of the old windows that were removed from this $3.5 million building. And because our calculator will calculate the accumulated depreciation on those windows, It also calculates that the regular federal tax deduction, the value of the components minus their accumulated depreciation, uh, will generate a regular federal tax deduction of 80520 And this can be exported to PDF, um, allowing you to save a copy of this in your files. Again, this is fully supportable and can be used uh, to support the number if it's ever questioned by the IRS. As you can see, this takes less than five minutes. It can generate really large deductions. It's, it's a no-brainer, something that you've got to be looking for. If your clients say they replaced a the component, 
they don't have a cost seg study done, you now have a tool. This is a proprietary tool uh, created by our KBKG engineering team. Again, if you have questions, feel free to give us a call. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Have a great day.